In my last video, we had a look at this inductor, which was from an LED bulb that had failed. I ended up taking a cross-section of this to have a look inside, and it ended up being rather interesting, so I thought I'd show you some of the ones that I've done in the past. Here is a normal metal film resistor. You can see the ceramic core that has been coated in metal, and then these slits cut in it to adjust the resistance. Here is a solid tantalum capacitor. This one's only been cut one-fourth the way through. Here is a common 1N4001 silicon diode. Here you can see the silicon junction in the middle with the two copper connections on either side. There's some sort of conductive adhesive between these and of course the plastic encapsulation. This here is a rather interesting silicon avalanche diode manufactured by Vachet. This diode is in a scented glass package, which contains quite a few different metals that have been soldered together. I'm not exactly sure why they do everything in this package, but it's certainly rather interesting. Uh, the construction also explains why this particular diode has a surprisingly large leakage current due to light exposure. As you can see, the scented glass package connects directly to the silicon die. Now the particular diode that I'm interested in today is this one here. This is a 2CL77 20 kilovolt 5 milliamp diode. This one's manufactured by HVGT Semiconductor. And I'm rather interested to see how this is constructed inside. If we take a look at the data sheet, we can see it's a pretty standard uh, high voltage silicon rectifier diode. And we can see it's used in circuits such as this one here but the applications list air purifiers, negative ion generators, and electrostatic voltage doubling circuits. But I've more specifically seen these before in laser printers quite often in the high voltage circuits for the toner electrostatic stuff. But you can often see these in low power, reasonably low voltage x-ray machines, that being 20 kilovolts of course, and of course other high voltage rectifier circuits. However, I'm not quite sure how these are manufactured, although looking more specifically at the datasheet, we can see this here, maximum forward voltage drop is 45 volts, which makes me think this is actually just a whole bunch of normal silicon dies stacked on top of each other in order to reach a 20 kilovolt breakdown voltage. Now, in order to do the cross-section, I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did in that other LED video. I'll play it really quickly, though, so that you can get an idea. Now, I did cut this on a cross-section with the mold line, just in case there was some sort of non-symmetrical design, but I'm doubting it. Now, this took quite a while. I started off with 250 grit and made my way down to eventually 3000 grit. A little bit the way through, we can start to see some, by the looks of it, bits of copper on one side of the diode. And yet, here we go. Now that I've sanded the other side down a bit more, we can see that it is actually symmetrical. Sanding it down even further, we can start to make out some of the silicon dye. Can't really see exactly what's going on here yet, so I'll sand it down all the way to halfway through now. And of course, this took quite a while. It's, it takes quite a lot of effort to sand these things down. Eventually, I got to halfway through, though, and started polishing it with some 2000 and 3000 grit sandpaper to make it nice and smooth. Now that I'm down to halfway through and have polished it, it's really obvious now. You can see the individual lines of the dies. So this is definitely just manufactured through a bunch of stacked diodes. Now we can quite clearly make out the individual silicon dies, and if we count them, there's 22 of them. And of course, dividing the maximum forward voltage drop of 45 volts down by 22, we get about 2 volts per silicon die, which doesn't really make sense to me. I would have expected it to be 0.5 volts per die, or about that. 
So I'm not sure if these are special or if the manufacturer has just been very generous with their maximum forward voltage drop. Maybe it's under the maximum temperature or something, something. I'm not quite sure. If you do know, please leave it in the description because I can't really find much information about how these high voltage diodes work. Although I did test later on with a high voltage insulation tester and I found that the diode drop was actually much closer to what I expected. It's also perfectly feasible that the AliExpress seller that I bought from either sold me the wrong diode intentionally or accidentally or maybe they even purchased a fake diode unintentionally. So I'll just leave you with some other close-up shots of this. And as always, thanks for watching.